In those areas of nation warring against nation, where prejudice and racism are present, where people stand by generational grudges and biases and refuse to let go and refuse to see how we can be one under God. The coming of the Messiah was prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus' time. Jesus entered into this world and lived here. Here's just a couple of those prophecies that we see come, come true. He would be human. This was prophesied in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He would be Jewish, again, in Genesis chapter 22. He would be a descendant of King David, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. He would be born in Bethlehem. He would have a messenger go before him. He would have a healing and teaching ministry. He was scourged and spit upon. His death was with criminals. His side was pierced. His bones unbroken. The Micah and Malachi and Isaiah and Zechariah and Psalm all prophesied this happening. And that so many of the predictions of the Messiah were fulfilled in Jesus Christ can really only be explained one way. That the Old Testament prophets were God-inspired, sharing God-breathed words. These predictions and more match the facts of Jesus' ancestry, his life, his crucifixion, and resurrection. Prophecies of entire empires, Babylonia, Persian, Persia, Greek, Roman, are all in Daniel. And details of events happening in Persia, in Greece, in Syria, in Egypt, in Israel, are also in Daniel. And are historically substantiated. Gosh, there's, there's a lot of prophecies still to be fulfilled. There's the second coming of Christ and the rapture of the church. The resurrection of the saved and unsaved. The millennial reign of Christ. The new heavens and the new earth. And all of this should tell us that there is still more to come with Christ our Lord and Savior. And it's easy to be discouraged by listening to the world out there. But when we listen to God through God's prophets, through the gospel, we find ourselves encouraged and assured of God's love and grace in pre and presence in our life. After all, Isaiah reminded us, don't be afraid. God is with us. Thanks be to God for that. concerns that we might have or praises that we want to celebrate together as a church family, as friends. And sometimes we have something that we want prayed for, but we're not quite ready to share it out loud. Remember that the welcome cards, the back side of it, has a place where you can write down and then a couple of boxes that you can check how you'd like that followed up on. So I encourage you to use those. But are there any prayer concerns, praises, joy celebrations to be lifted this morning? Stand up for a moment. Congratulations, Raymond. If you know Raymond at all, that, that award does not surprise you. He has spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, great job, Raymond. Other prayer concerns. We, we keep the continue to keep the Peroni family in our prayers with the passing of Larry Peroni's dad. Uh, Jan and Mike Malcheski, 
Keep them in our prayers. Jan for healing, Mike for strength uh, and encouragement. Other prayer concerns, praises. I give thanks for the children in our church this morning, for the children of our church family. I know I say this uh, most Sundays, and I, I will continue to say it, but they are such a blessing to us. It brings such joy, and I know to your lives, but to the life of this church as well. Friends, let's take a moment and go to our Lord, lifting up that which is on our hearts in silent prayer. And we'll pray that together for the Lord's prayer. in our community, sharing good news, <coughs> speaking your words and doing your acts that you commissioned us to. Heavenly God, hear the prayers that have been on our hearts and in our minds, not spoken out loud, but we know you hear them. We give thanks for Raymond and his spirit in everything that he does. We ask for healing for Janice Marcheski and courage for Mike Marcheski, core courage and strength. For the Peroni family, we lift them up and continue to lift them up in this time of mourning. This and so much more, Lord, we have prayed to you. Now let us come together, bring the prayer of Jesus to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of today, don't feel obligated to have to give. We're just delighted that you're here and worshiping.
friends, I invite you to stand as you are able for our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving. Almighty and loving God, may our actions, love, and giving reflect Christ's presence within us. Help us live in a way that shows Christ within us, exemplifying love, respect, hospitality. As we share and give, may our offerings, gifts, and tithes glorify Jesus in gratitude, abundance, and equity. We present these offerings, believing that sharing Christ is the most loving act. In the name of Christ, our rock and redeemer, we pray. Amen. And if you would, take out your hymnal, turn to page, uh, or to hymn number 318, Mirror My God to Be.
offer up this blessing, this benediction to you. Lord, make us one with you, one in heart, mind, and spirit, and love. Make us instruments of your glory and vessels of your praise. Cause our complete being to rejoice and find rest in your perfect will. We are ever inscribed upon your heart and before you. So therefore, watch over us and make us pure in every way. Purify our families, our relationships, our decisions, our minds, our thoughts, our deeds, until we reflect on your glory. Let your righteous hand be seen in us and in the world. We go forth now to love and serve the Lord. In all that we do and all that we are and all that we, we will be. Pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you, my friends. I'll see many of you next week.